Now that's how you work in the crumbled space. <laughs> Frank is about to scribe the pentagram, his name on the on the other side of the blade, which if I can say so myself came out beautiful. Oh, do you have those sleeves actually original? Like when you do your stuff, is that why you made them? Those little yes. kind of sleeves? That's a sheath I cut to pieces. Yeah, but for that purpose, right? No. Oh, no? They just they ended up working for that. It just worked out. One of those things, you know. Just how do you actually, will, how will you know the, what, like the size ratio to make it just like how you make sure that it's gonna fit there? I'll I'll do a, like a an, an air mark. Oh, like you're just gonna I'll come pass it around it on top of it. With yeah. This is complicated. <laughs> Once it's set up for because I only do my backspacers. Oh, that's so true. So you don't have can, to do a lot of. Yeah, every backspacer I put in, it's exactly the same. And then I'll just touch, I'll come really close, make sure it's the bottom of the F, and then I'll go to the R and make sure it'll go on there. It's going to be a change a little bit. Hopefully it's not. Oh, so you go the top left corner and uh, the bottom right corner, and as, it's, as long as it's right. still on the flat, you know that it's going to fit. Pretty much, yeah. Kind of makes sense. might be in there at a little bit of an angle, but I'll try to make it go with the grind. Let you know, this makes me nervous as fuck. What? I, if, I haven't put my name on a blade in years. <laughs> years. Just. It's gonna work. Because if I slip my hand off. Screwed. When I do a backspacer, I can screw it up and refinish it a lot of this travesty. <laughs> Does it actually say whole thing? Frank Fisher or just Fisher? F Fisher. F period Fisher. Just to distinguish between my father and my uh -huh. Mark, he's just Fisher, and mine has an F period. He uses this also? He uses Yeah. Exactly the same. I mean, that's how I learned. So I kept my processes the same, just got the same type of machine. I actually got a bigger panograph than he does. But really, I could rather use the smaller one to save me cubic or square foot or so, <laughs> which in this shop is huge. It is funny because watching, like, this is not a big shop, this is a small shop and watching this and a lot of other areas here, it reminds me of Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, me in my in little Brooklyn. closet. Yeah, I get no sympathy from you, huh? Well, you ex exactly you do because I know how it is to have <laughs> not True. much space. True enough. I love hearing guys 
when they see this, they can't believe how small my shop is. They think I have a 50,000 square foot warehouse. Yeah. And, no, just even to me, and I've been working small crowd that. It's officially marked. Oh, nice! That came out beautiful. It's you very can barely discreet. see it, but it's it is nice. It's very discreet, and it's I I don't like big black marks across the grind. So that. let's show them. Look at that first Gauka hollow grind, and oh man, it is beautiful. For a beauty like this, I'm willing to forget my hate for hollow grinds. <laughs> One thing, actually, I gotta give to Frank is yeah, it might be hollow grind, but it is ground to cut. What is this about 10,000 probably I behind the edge right now? And just to show that it's not just this one for me, look at his bottle that is pretty much ready. He would probably kill me if I drop this now. <laughs> look at that. You'd learn how to hollow grind real quick. <laughs> right, I would have to fix it. It's This one is probably under 10,000, right? I think you would measure it. It's Yeah, it's like 8 or 9 on the very edge. So, really nice can grind the jeans and I was telling him how one thing what mesmerizes me is how his switch meets with that front front recurve grind it just looks like a like an eagle beak this is insanely beautiful so I think it's pretty nice what do we oh I just have to we said I have to just clean the flipper make the flipper nice which is like the biggest pressure on me now because mm -hmm. everything is so perfect about this knife right now it's elegant I use Frank's little wheel not little Frank's fine brass why brass wire wheel but the fine one to do the orange peel kind of like he does it's not as nice but it's it's nice I think it's great so we have that kind of everything is nicely matched actually has a really nice feeling to it, it does have a nice texture. and uh, Frank just picked out the pressure on the on the the lock bar and it's just nice. Good good lock, not too late, not too early. Like I don't like early lockups. Like when I like so even those that you see there that is really early, it's not go it's never staying like that. I'm not a big fan of it. Yeah, like 20-30% of a of a point one six frame. Mm -hmm. more, so, so you're getting like yeah, I guess it's one sixteen, something like that. No? Yeah, close to that. I guess yeah, that'd be about a third. Yeah, that'd be thirty percent. Oh, that would be thirty, so a little less. That'd yeah, be, that's about what I like fifty to sixty thousandths on that thick of a frame. I'm going against myself with the lifetime using such a thin stack, but it's you know. The safety and the strength of the lag, I put that before, because it's it's gonna take a long time before it wears out. Mm -hmm. And even if it wears in all the way, I mean, it doesn't mean the knife is broken, really. Yeah. I really like this one. The action is. Well, I learned so much from Frank. Do it like the. I, I can tell them about this deed and trick, right? Yeah, absolutely. The deed and said, check this out, guys. So. He took one to three plaques there, he treated hardened steel and he did exact dimensions, little holes with the 1 16th ball and uh, carbide bit. So with a digital readout, you drill, what you said, you have a couple different de uh, they're depths, all, they're right? all different depths. What is like your favorite one? What is, so we tell them the number, actual number. 20, 27 thousandths. 27 thousandths deep. And that so that's actually little less than half. Than half half, yeah. half yeah. is about 30 something, 31? 31. 31. So we're about 5,000 you know, uh, below the half of the Deaton ball, which means that the, the bigger half of the ball will be inside in the titanium. When you put the ball in it, put the titanium scale on it, your, your lock bar, and just tap it with the hammer, and exact same depth every single time. Yes. It's, it's really ingenious and simple. Every time I do it in my arbor press, you know, arbor press like that. So I always put the ball here in my lock and bring it there, hoping that I'm not going to shake and drop the ball. <laughs> bring it there and just kind of always eyeball it. 
I mean, it works, but if you can have consistency like this, definitely better. It's fast. Yeah. What else did I? I learned so much. Man, yeah, the topping was beautiful. And I need to make a grinding jig, something like this. I can actually do simpler than that for my flat grinds, but I, I decide I have to do the jig. It definitely gonna speed up the process and not so much about the speed. The speed is pretty good now with the grinding, but the the perfection. Precision. When you look at this, the, how perfect it is, it's insane. And I wanna do that with my flat grinds, kind of similar. Pretty much, just, yeah, it's gonna pretty much guarantee the exactly straight lines. I can change the angles. You know, when you have a jig like that, you can change if you want that angle to go straight with that edge, or if you want it to be favored different ways. You can set the Dricasso area just perfect, kind of like I when I grind it like this. You know, I freehand hold it like that, but you can set your jig to do it for you. So you know, another nice thing. That would be actually kind of hard, right, with the jig. It would have to be kind of special jig where one part here would have to be risen up to make that that approach because the pivot hole has to be above the 